Yep. Well, that was anticlimactic. Okay, Tyler. Yeah. Go ahead, shut the air off. We're gonna see how much air pressure we're losing per minute here. We're down five PSI in five seconds, or 15 seconds. Eight to nine PSI in 30 seconds. It's 45 seconds. Sorry, I'm shaking so much. Say that's about 18 psi per minute air leak. Definitely down 20 psi in a minute and 15 seconds. So that's a this thing should not be on the road like this. <laughs> okay so hank had taken this bus to another shop uh in the bloomington indiana area a fleet services shop uh they work on on buses uh and semis and stuff like that uh there's no coach heat so um they took it in there's a switch here for these blowers here that have these big blower motors that blow <laughs> air out next to all the windows all the way in the whole coach it heats the whole coach they're very large electric motors um actually in the mci it's one one large motor with two squirrel cage fans i want to say it's like 150 amps or something like that it's it's a lot it's a very large motor and they have a system design because if you pull into somewhere and you just let your bus sit at idle the alternator does not produce enough electricity to supply those fan that fan to be running with that so you got to either have it on high idle uh to do that um, or they plug there's an auxiliary thing where you can plug it in plug in the bus and they can run those motors But they put a safety in the system where this switch will not turn on unless the alternators producing power to be able to do that And these guys didn't know that so they just came in here and flipped the switch. Ah, it doesn't work uh, So they they charged him 13 hours of diag on the heating system to get the heating working on the bus at $150 an hour for 13 hours i run out of fingers and toes trying to add up the I, you end up at an arm and a leg is what it is and that's just for the diag not for the charges for the things they did to fix it then they charged them the hourly rate to fix it and what they did was they bypassed the safety systems on this so now whenever the key switch is just on on this this will go on so if he actually leaves this on and pulls in somewhere he can drain his batteries and if he shuts the bus off he won't be able to start it because they bypassed all the safety features of it the thermostat is missing on here so that would have caused a problem uh you know this you set this to a certain temperature and it opens a valve that lets coolant flow through uh there's also two main uh like petcock like household uh water valves in the back that you can for the summertime you can turn them off and then none of the coolant runs forward in the bus and it just stays back by the engine um so whenever you're diagnosing heating systems on a bus the first thing you do is you check those two valves uh and then you make sure the coolant's flowing this fan we got confirmation from the previous owner that when the when the bus was running this fan did work um, so that's not why he didn't have heat. So all that time they spent investigating why these fans weren't working, bypassing the safety system systems, they just wasted his money, you know, and they're, they're not coach. I don't want to call them ignorant, they're, but they're not coach smart. And they didn't, all buses pretty much have the same feature because these fans are huge. Uh, GMs, MCI, everything has that. 
um, they should have known better, but he had to pay for them to learn about something, but they didn't even learn the right way. They just made up their own stuff and he paid a ton of money. His bill ended up being $4,400 there and uh, around there, plus or minus a few dollars. Um, and he was very upset about it because they didn't really do anything. The heat, oh, when it was all done, it still didn't work. It got here, there's no heat. Um, all they did was, quote, fix the fan, <laughs> but it worked anyways when, when the alternator is producing power. So there was a, another valve that we're going to find, you know, we're going to look for on here that must be closed, um, that it has air that goes to it. So there's a there's a rheostat and, and there's certain ohms that it, it gives by the thermometer part um, to set the temperature that it would open and close the valve to maintain a certain temperature in the bus. Just, it, it's... It's all done by the coolant and the coolant's, you know, flowing through there. So anyways, long story short, um, you know, he paid them a lot of money for that. And I think that is a waste of money. I wanted to talk to the owner of that shop about what they did, because I don't think it was nice for them to do that. They, he paid for them to learn about it and they still didn't fix it right. So I think he should get some money back from that. Um, and then through the course of things that you're going to see here in this video, we found a whole bunch of other things that the shop messed up that, that damaged the bus, caused issues. Uh, major safety issues. Oh, when he complained to the build and the owner said, well, hey, I even gave you a complimentary DOT inspection and this bus should have never left that shop in the condition. He, he should have went away in a tow truck or whatever. It had such massive air leaks in it and everything. And then plus the damage that they did to it, it should have not been on the road as you'll see in this video, but it's just a horrible situation. It was a horrible experience at another shop. We hear this stuff over and over and over again. It's just sickening how much money was really 90% of the money that he paid was complete waste of money. And then he ended up in the negative because of all the, the mess that they caused uh, that we had to fix, he's got to pay for that. So it, I, I think you'll enjoy this video. It's pretty messed up. See it, but the snap ring looks like it's wanting to cooperate. Right, uh, I just use the uh, super super slick stuff to get in there and lube it up a little. Don't break it. Up. Tap on the hammer. On this? Yes. Keep going. <laughs> one hand on the hammer, one hand on the video camera, and I haven't hit you yet. <laughs> I'm not going to be less mad than you do. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get a swing down there. the o-ring hard plastic like now it's broke we took it off but yeah, it's supposed to be a soft rubbery and the seals are the same way like these seals the one that's in the front of it when we take it out it's gonna be hard as a rock not like they're supposed to be you can see the rusted holes through on the turbo pipe I saw that black suit on there and it looked like it was a crack when it, we did a video chat over the phone. So I ordered the part ahead of time, I'm glad I did. So I've got it sitting right there, but yeah, it's 
Let's see the daylight through it. There you can see how that manifold's been leaking. Exhaust gases. This ball was seized. We greased the grease fitting on it and then uh, tapped it with a hammer and then put some super slick stuff, super, super, super slick, slick stuff on it. <laughs> See how that rust is in there. You want to grab the grease gun again? Yep. Okay. It was all just coming apart. Just rusted and blasted out. You can see how that air filter boot there isn't on straight, and then that clamp you said is loose. It looks like it is. It's not even on there. It's a wiggle. Yeah, look at that. That's been able to suck dirty air. That's not good for the engine. That's between the air filter and the turbo. We have that leak fixed. Okay, so we're at 100 PSI here. This is after fixing the belt tensioner, we're doing a rebuild kit on that, putting new O-rings on it, and then tightening up a regular, a pressure regulator that was leaking back there that controls the tension on the belt tensioner. Uh, we're obviously still leaking quite a bit. Looks like we're already down about four PSI in the first 30 seconds. But that is a huge improvement over what it was. We're still not gonna pass a DOT air brake pre-trip inspection with this amount of leaking. We're going to call that 8 PSI a minute. So I think we were 18 PSI a minute if I remember right. So big improvement. There's another pretty substantial air leak. Oh, the airbag's leaking too. I didn't even get to look back that far. Uh, you happened to have sprayed it by accident. Wow. The, the mist from what you were spraying carried over to the airbag. Now there's bubbles all over the airbag. <laughs> that ain't good. Spray that with water for me. Spray the airbag all the way around. Especially the bottom of it. Let me spray this thing. Yeah, you should not see cords through your airbag. All the rubber is blown away. And that shock, that shock is blown out.
starting to see rust, like surface rust, and a lot of places on the factory paint. Shit, we're recording that. Spray that back on there again. Yep. Just had this at another shop getting it greased. Looks like they kind of greased that. I can tell you for sure they missed that. Definitely did not grease it. They did grease the upper and lower kingpins. Slack adjuster got done. S cam looks like it got done. I can see grease in that they, they've over him because I can see grease hanging on the back of the brake shoes. Yep, I can see it pushed out in here. Yep, I can see the red grease on okay, the brake shoes I'll, I'll in, look through the front of the inside the drum. Two or three, might as well Release the brake. Give me a second. Let me get some soapy water. Okay, step and hold it. Let me go to the other side. Is the shock loose? No. No. The tire was rubbing on the shock. There. Something was. It's gotta be the tire. This is a new DD3 on this side too. Let me guess, they didn't grease the DD3 either. I hope they didn't. <laughs> I saw how they did the rest of it. Okay. I see one leak. Yeah. <laughs> side is skinnier than the other side as the brake kind of tapers in and they put the clamp on backwards that's why it won't seal up there. We try to tighten it and then realize it's on backwards. And there's obviously still a leak back there too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All of that grease. on the brake shoes themselves. On both sides. That's the brake lining up against the brake drum. And that is the freshly squeezed out grease. Brand new, right on the bricks. They didn't grease that fitting. There's grease coming out of there, but I don't see fresh grease on that. So, regardless, they missed one. If they did hit the other one, it's all very important. 
They didn't grease the fittings on the DD3 brakes, which most shops aren't gonna know that air brake canisters have a grease fitting. And the way these guys greased, it's a good thing they probably did skip it. They would over grease it and blew them out. So we took this panel cover off and there's some coolant that's been leaking in there. And then we noticed this broken hose clamp was just laying up in there and that goes on that main heater hose back there. That's actually not even leaking, but it's got no hose clamp on it. You could lose all your engine coolant through there. That's crazy, so we're gonna have to put a new hose clamp on there. This is what's seeping is this valve here. It's seeping a little bit, but not terribly, but it is. Uh, we're checking this valve here. It's, air, it's an electric solenoid that opens up and then sends air pressure through to move a plunger to open this valve here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's always open or always closed. The solenoid is working. We added 24 volts to it and we can hear it clicking and opening and closing. So I just gotta figure out which way it goes. Now, is it getting the right signal from inside because there's uh, the thermostat control on the inside is missing. And then there's a rheostat, that long rod has like a meat thermometer on the end of it basically that goes inside of the heater there. And we're not sure if that's ohmed out right or if it's sending the right signal, but we can bypass everything. This valve, if it's bad, is like a thousand bucks. Um, or we can just have the heat run all the time as long as you have the valves open in the back flowing coolant through the lines. Uh, and then he has a control, a switch up front. You can flip on to turn the blower fans on. Uh, that would probably be the easiest way and cheapest way to get him heating uh, and cooling in or heating in the bus to be able to do that. So, but we're gonna at least check the system out, just spend a few more minutes on it and, and check and see if we can find a, a good solution for it. But uh, this right here, um, I, it's, it must be closed, not open. And that's why he has no heat. So here we're sliding on this door. It, was, it had fallen off. We put a new bay hinge on it. And we just slide it down the track here. We got dish soap lubricating it. Yeah. It was going much better when I had two hands helping. <laughs> Go up on the door more, you're, you're too far down. Okay. I got the rod inside at least right now. So. Push a little more, it should click in the Clickers aren't running. One of them is, but one's not. Yeah, that one's not popping up far enough. I need to trim the edge of that back No, door. you need to push it back down the other way. Definitely burned out. This bulb's definitely burned out. This is another one. It's two four. change sound so come around to the other side Jonathan's doing his first kingpin here should I do it with this long one yep push down hard and hope it moves You did drive that other pin all the way out, right? Yeah. Okay. There's <laughs> two. Yes, there's two. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> it was longer. 
grease in there. Yeah. <laughs> Take off the slide adjuster. Want to rip? Yep. Some safety glasses? No. Let's go. That one's actually got an open close valve, not a pull chain on it. Yeah. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Go slow. <laughs> Mostly just a mist. Not too bad. Smells like locker room. I'm going to hit it again. Okay. It smells bad. This smells really bad. <laughs> Poor Jonathan's down here working on the king. <laughs> I have one. Okay, Hunter is tightening down the rooftop here, which was pretty loose. I think maybe that's why it was leaking from the roof. So here's all the grease pumped in to the brakes because somebody greased the crap out of the anchor pins. Absolutely ridiculous. The brakes are completely contaminated with it, obviously. So in the brake drum, the That's a pretty good shot of it. He paid for that to be done. Okay, we got the new turbo pipe on. The new exhaust manifold gaskets on both sides are done on there. So that should take care of our turbo exhaust leaks on here. We still have to put the air filter back in. Um, they had replaced the air filter they put a new air filter on at that shop, but they didn't actually hook up the, that's why this was off. If you remember that boot was turned and the clamp was loose, they never actually hooked it back up. So it got to suck dirty air for 400 miles on the way here. Uh, lets the air filter last a lot longer that way, but that's not good for the engine. We still have that leaky airbag on here. That part is ordered. It'll be here on Thursday. I just wanna see how much of an improvement we have here holding air. We know that airbag is leaking pretty seriously. So other than that, seeing where we're getting closer on the DOT inspection here to be able to hold air. We fixed that brake can. There was a, the clamp was on the diaphragm or on the brake can backwards. So it was leaking by the diaphragm when we fixed that. Okay. 
I'm going to say we're down to about 3 PSI a minute right now with, with that leaky airbag. So as soon as we get that fixed, we should be able to pass the air brake test. So that'll be, that's a, a big, a big step in the right direction. That's been a minute now. And yeah, that's about three PSI, maybe four PSI, but I guarantee that airbag is leaking 90% of those leaks. This is all rotting out and leaking. And just touch it, it falls apart. Been fighting to get this airbag out of there. It's all, the plate was all rusted on the top. That thing's crazy. What? What now? If I hit that and made it crooked? No, it's just oh. it's it's so rusted and there's no metal left to, to hold it in place. What lift out of the bottom now or <laughs> the hand is not a hand. Can you get a pry bar under it? There's not that big of a Otherwise, blast the air hammer in between the base plate and the bottom of the rolling lobe. Go back up. really bad. Ugh. Let me see their hammer over here. Here's the other side front. And you can see all the grease. They popped into the anchor pins. That's all their fresh, pretty grease. They've globbed all over everything. And it's all over the brakes. It's inside the drum. Cannot grease those like that because the only place for the grease to go is just, just plops right in there. You can see it just plopping out. There is no question that that was just done. This isn't somebody else did this a long time ago. Here we are on the drive axle. Same thing, the roller pins. Look at all the grease they've pushed through. It dripped out. It's on the brakes. And, oh. This is, I mean, you can see how just over greased everything. This is where the grease is just massive amounts of grease plopped everywhere. crazy but it's fresh it's what they just did it's in the drums everywhere you cannot over grease those like that 
Okay, we have that airbag off. So we're down to about one PSI a minute air leak. Not too shabby. Put a new pull chain, chain uh, valves that replaced all these. The one was leaking there, there, and there. Stop those air leaks. We put a temporary leak plug on here to block off where the airbag was so we can air the bus up. We're leaking less than one PSI a minute now, which is absolutely incredible. We're airing it back up right now because we got to get the suspension up in the back. Release the parking brake. We're checking the rear brakes. But, uh, it's doing great. That tire is the 49th week of 2004. What does that make that? Uh, not quite 19 years old. 15th week of 2005. Getting younger, slightly. And then uh, this is the other steer tire here. And this one is also... Newer than the drive tires, but also 2012. First week of 2012. Okay, so here's the other drive side. You can see the grease from the anchor pins on the shoes. That's a, that's a shame. Okay. So those are, I mean, you can just see where they just over greased everything. It's missing a very important cooling element here. There's supposed to be a rubber seal in here on the door and at the top, it's missing. It is on the sides, but the way these radiator fans work, they're sucking air and you need to suck it through the radiator so that cold air from outside is going through the radiator to cool it. Well, without this seal here, it allows some air from out here to come in and bypass so it's not going through the radiator and then it gets sucked through there. So it's important to have this. Um, we're in a, a tight time crunch on this. So I don't have the ability to order it right now. It's winter time, so he's gonna be okay. But before summertime or before he gets driving in hot conditions, he needs to get those weather seals in this back door. So that seals up and forces the air to come through the radiator to cool it. So this is on the tag axle. But you can see all the grease ready to just drip. It's almost touching, but not quite. But we're gonna we're gonna go ahead. Some of it has got in there. I can see it on the brake shoes. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and wipe that, get it, take it off, get it all cleaned out of there. But that's a lot of grease just hanging there, ready to. But like I said there's already some down in there on there. Flashlight's a little too bright. So that was just hanging there, ready to plop out. <laughs> This one, you can see the actual grease from the S cam touching. All right, what did I do? The S cam is actually touching the brake over there. Right down. It's there, and it's touching it. And then obviously back here. There's the big blob from overdoing the S cam that is sitting at the point right where the drum's at. So that got on there too. This one's not as bad as the other ones, but it is there. Dripped out, dripped on there. Suckers. Oh, that's the last wheel. Go ahead and start.
Yeah. This is kind of cool. The bus has been sitting now for maybe six hours since we last aired it up and there's still 50 PSI of air in it. So it is holding air really good right now. That's impressive. It was not all the way filled up when we did it either. Um, I, we had it up. We needed just enough to get the brakes off. So I think we filled it to 90 PSI. So it didn't go to 120. So in, you know, like five, maybe six, I think it was six hours ago. We're still there. That's very, very impressive. So we're getting two new steer tires. So we're moving the steer tires. Um, to the back and then we're getting rid of those two old tires uh, and then everything in here is going to be uh, about 10 years old in the back 11 years old uh, which is still old but nothing like what it was and then you'll have two brand new steer tires so we got rid of those ones that are almost 20 you know 18 19 years old we got rid of those tires uh, everything else is much newer uh, 2015 on the drive axles on this side and, and such so it's uh, a big improvement. We're gonna get the new tires tomorrow and uh, the airbag should be in tomorrow and we'll have this bus uh, back on the road for a test drive. Well, I finally talked to the shop owner today. Uh, I had called over three days to get in touch with the guy, kept leaving messages. Yesterday, his secretary or woman answering the phone uh, said yes, I had told that she had told him that uh, I wanted to talk to him about the work that was done on this bus, that it was unsafe and the damages have been caused. And uh, I said, well, is he going to call me back? And she said, I don't know. I'm not a mind reader. So that wasn't very nice. Um, so I called again today, the, the third day that he hadn't called me back. And luckily, somebody else answered the phone. One of the other guys in the shop didn't realize who I was and, and said, oh, yeah, he's outside. I'll get him for you and brought him to the phone. So he talked to me and he wasn't happy about it. He wasn't interested at all in paying uh, our labor to repair any of the damages that he did to this bus. Um, any of the materials for things that were messed up by them. He wasn't interested in anything, reimbursing anything at all. Uh, he said if the guy wanted to drive it back to him that he would fix it, but he's not supposed to, you know, he can't drive this back to him with uh, grease all over the brakes, uh, you know, 400 miles back to Bloomington, uh, Indiana area. Uh, that's just not feasible. And uh, our shop rate is within $5 an hour of what theirs is. He told me that he did a favor to the guy by doing the work on this bus that they normally charge, I think he said $205 an hour, it's 200 and something dollars an hour for coaches. Um, and then their regular shop rate is $155 an hour. So he, he only charged them the 155, so he did him a favor. Um, he ended up ending the phone call rather abruptly saying that he's not gonna do anything about it, that he's gonna run his business the way he sees fit and for me to run my business the way I want to. And then he said goodbye and hung up. <laughs> what a real piece of work. Uh, they, their shop did very unsafe work to this bus. They damaged it, not to mention all of the hours that he billed for the stuff that they didn't fix and the diagnostic time that was just junk because he didn't understand buses. He even told me that, oh, I told him I'm not an expert on buses, but yet they have a shop rate for buses. That didn't make any sense to me. Um, but it is what it is. If you're in the Bloomington area, uh, do not go to a fleet services shop, or if you gotta go to one, start backwards on the alphabet and work your way backwards and then that'll maybe keep you away from that shop. <laughs>